Forge the Narrative. Hey everybody, welcome to Forge the Narrative. My name is Paul Murphy, your host for the Battle of Souls podcast. I'm joined tonight by Chris Morgan. Back in black. And Josh Gann. Flesh is weak. Episode 301, Cross That Threshold. Am, am I that late to the party? <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. A couple weeks Nurgle's now. blessings just come at the wrong times. Uh, but Seems yeah. like only a week ago we were at 300. Yeah. I mean, I'm excited. <laughs> still still pumped about uh, doing this. Yeah. Sydney, I've been on, I don't know if... I think I was been on at least one other show, maybe by the time you hear this, you know, where I talk about just it's cool to interact with everyone. So thanks for folks that send in their thoughts and suggestions on army lists and the sending in some congratulations on hitting that 300 milestone. And we certainly appreciate everyone continuing to listen. Absolutely. Well, I've been doing a lot of space brain theory craft. I uh, started looking at the Astraeus super heavy tank. This has been out for a while. This is the Forge World, you know, resin monstrosity, bestial guns bristling on every angle of the model primaris tank yes the winner of the most ridiculous placement of the storm bolter award it's like in <laughs> in the back it's in the boot <laughs> yeah it's over the door in the back it's the 40k tank that most resembles a scorpion from halo ah yeah yeah that makes sense this thing uh 24 wounds it points in something like 710 730 points it's it's a, it's castellan range points okay 24 wounds toughness 8 strength 9 the strength and stuff is is actually relevant. We'll get to that in a second. It has a 2 plus save, and it's got void shields. Void shields are used to ignore mortal wounds. Uh, unmodifiable works very similar to a uh, like an invulnerable save, but for only for mortal wounds. And it degrades, so it's got a, a, from when it's 11 and 24 wounds has a 5 plus vo- void save. Um, with 8 attacks, BS3, uh, <laughs> web skill yes. 5 plus. It's, a, it's, loaded. Yeah, it's so, loaded for the meta right now. Um, comes with a, It's a single model. It's equipped with twin heavy Bolter, Storm Bolter, <laughs> the the mentioned Storm Bolter, okay, yes, uh, Iron Hail, Heavy Stubber, putting Heavy Stubbers in everything. I think this was this might have been the first, uh, the first Primaris thing that had a Heavy Stubber, or or did the uh, Repulsor come out first? Yeah, I couldn't tell you. On Probably that one, the Repulsor right? first. I, I think the Repulsor was out first. Yeah, but they were pretty close together. Two Laz Rippers, Enhanced Repulsor Field, which is this melee thing. And twin macro accelerator cannon. So you know what heavy bolters do. You know what a heavy stubber does. Uh, the plasma eradicator is one of the weapon options. And that is heavy D3, neg 4 AP, 1 damage unless you overcharge it. And then it's strength 9, neg, uh, neg 4, 2 damage. The Laz Ripper has a 24 inch weapon, heavy 2. So got two of these. Strength 8, neg 3, flat 3 damage a piece. Anytime you see that flat damage and when it's flat 3 damage, you should kind of perk up and... And look. I think yeah, that's a good threshold. one. Yeah. <laughs> you don't like a flat two, you like a flat three? Well, to flat two's good. I mean, like, I mean, I I would be probably just as impressed if this was a flat two damage. I, the only reason I say that is every time I see a flat three, I just get triggered because in my mind, I'm I'm not wounding custodes efficiently. And I know custodes are probably not like the, the biggest threat on the horizon right now, but it just it makes me feel like I potentially have an, an army I'm playing against that I'm, I'm wasting because a lot of their stuff is four wounds. So you, you would still have to have two shots from something like that, which would give you two wasted... You, know, you get where I'm going. I do. But I, I, do. Apologize. I can see you how you, you, you just feel yeah, those like terminators. You're losing value. Right. So I always I always prefer a flat two, which is just a meism. So I'm sorry. I didn't mean to disrupt your... No, no. I think you can always... I mean, let's talk about the flat two. I think you can, you can bank on... On performance with two. I mean, a, a flat two damage used to just completely wreck the I, even the idea of Primaris Marines on the table. Right. Anyway, so I, it's, it's dominant. Yes. Which is it's just the, one of the benefits of the Leviathan right now, I think, too, is that it'll shoot through Primaris. Yeah. So, but again, I think I would be just as impressed if this was a flat two. It happens to be three. So, you know, let's go with that. Uh, because when you're, what you're shooting at this, this strength eight, neg three, you probably need as many wounds as you can get. I agree. Uh, so the Storm Alter, then the Twin Macro Accelerator. This this is a 72-inch range weapon, heavy 12, strength 8, neg 2, 3 damage apiece, and you don't suffer negatives when you're shooting at flyers. Okay with that? <laughs> I think flyers are going to have a huge comeback. Well, it's it's a bigger version or like a better version of the like the Sakaran, you know how it has its twin accelerator auto cannon. Yeah, they look it's like real it's similar. basically like a better version of that. Yeah, that three no negative to to fly the fly keyword. So it's not necessarily flyers; it is the fly keyword. If it were to have a negative, it ignores the abilities which negatively modify its hit rolls. Mm. Uh, three damage. I mean, I don't know if you were being sarcastic or not when you said that when you that flyers may make a comeback. No, I, I did, I'm not at all. I, I think that's 
that's a thing. I'm, yeah. I'm, I mean, I'm saying Flyers outside of Eldar might be a thing, right? Yeah, Flyers, uh, I mean, with that qualifier on it, yeah, I, I, I can agree with that just a little bit. Just the, you know, the dominance of the cheap Eldar Flyers. In- well, I mean, even Necron, every Necron list has three, and, and I got it, Necrons are not the, the boogeyman they once were, but every Necron, Necron list these days has a, uh, like three doom sides in it. So uh, we've also had a lot of people writing in asking about the uh, storm talents and storm hawks. Yes, if we think that, that is... they're viable. I mean, I'm I'm actually saying I don't think they're all that great, but the volume of people asking you about it would indicate otherwise. Just a flying hypermobile platform for two assault cannons, right? So it's yeah, assault cannons and heavy bolters. I mean, it's it's decent screen killing, uh, screen clearing potential, but the. The real problem that a unit like that faces, and and something that's made it very difficult for me to justify since the early parts of this edition, is how easy it is to hit something like that, and how since everybody's, especially a few months ago, up until a few months ago, everyone was banking on, all right, I've got to have something that shoots that hurts a knight, so anything that can kill a knight can kill a Storm Talon in well, half also, as much effort. They're gearing up for Eldar Flyers, too, so, I mean, if they can kill uh, a couple of Hemlocks, then they can kill your Storm Talons, like, on accident. Yeah, I mean, it, vehicles are just, in general, really, really hard to justify unless they are obscenely tough to get rid of. Our tanks have fly too, don't they? Yeah, they do. So see where I'm going on that one. Plus, <laughs> the fact that you can just fly and, and snipe characters, right? Yeah, yeah. So like a fire raptor, for instance, like this is what we were we were doing and talking about for, in ages past. Of they typically people will get a little bit lazy uh, with their movement. At least one 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 person you're going to play against is going to get lazy with their movement. You zip your fast moving flyer over there, right next to their character, and hose them down with auto cannon and heavy bolter fire. It's a it's a good it's a efficient trade. So we, we talk more. We can talk more about this macro accelerator as we move on. But then the melee profiles, the enhanced repulsor field. Yeah. So this has an attack profile of its strength of the user. So strength nine in this case. Neg two armor. D three damage. So kind of like stomps, but you're needing BS five. Or sorry, uh, weapon skill five. Yeah. Uh, the repulsor field it subtracts three from any charge roll. Oh, so it's better than the normal one. Yeah, a little bit better. It's the enhanced repulsor field, and you can beat people to death with it. Apparently, seems good to me. Uh, it can fall back and shoot. Or, I mean, because it has fly, but it can also fall back and charge and shoot. Yeah, that has super, super heavy life. Super heavy stuff, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I. It's a lot of, it's a big point investment, but I wanted to talk about it because now that you can hang like marine traits and stuff on vehicles. I don't know. I think it goes back to my argument that we're, well, not my argument per se, but my point of view on the Leviathan. I think that I, I, I mean, everyone knows it's a great vehicle, super efficient, does what you need it to do, very powerful, but it's not cheap. You know, it does come in with a, you know, respectable point cost and just like that. So does this. And it also has a, a very large, silhouette so everyone's going to be able to hit it when they need to the mm-hmm. argument i was making earlier about the leviathan is when you have all your points tied up in these balls of death of, of various units that roll roam around the table together mutually supporting each other you know they get great synergy and they're super efficient but at the same time if you're playing on a table environment where people were able to just not be seen or can avoid you or can hide or it's insert you know whatever it's not as good. I think knowing knowing the uh, tablescape or what you get into with the extreme line of sight blocking, uh, like for instance, a, a Nova table is is going to have some uh, really, I guess, defined lanes of fire. But probably uh, one of the reasons that something like the Tau did so well. I mean, d- despite being in the hands of a great pilot, but the the terrain assisted with that. Yes. Uh, so having things that are a little bit, you know, I guess, a lower profile and able to be a little more agile because this. Uh, I, I've seen the, the Astraeus before. I don't own one yet. Mm. I think I'm talking myself into it. Yeah. Um, but it's, uh, it's a giant model. It just, I mean, it's got a 12 inch movement, but it's like, I think it's like a 12 inch model. Yeah, it's huge. So it's not getting out of line of sight. I don't think the front, the front half of it's at least as big as a repulsor. Probably bigger. Yeah. I think it's probably about three times as big as a repulsor. Having, having seen one at tournaments locally. They're they're pretty big. They're hard to hide from. They're hard to hide, and I, you know it's it's one of those those models that definitely catches people's eye. But I think the two plus save is obviously nice. But if, if people are still packing to be able to kill a knight, I mean, you still see now date today that list design is. Do I have enough output to kill a knight on turn one? Yeah, this this thing is still going to suffer from that. But this is the kind of thing that I believe can help turn, you know, flip it in marine on marine, on, like mirror matches. Because this thing is pumping out tons of damage, especially if you go first. Well, yeah, and once you apply all the iron hands shenanigans to it and, and reducing all the incoming range and then being able to heal it. 
It's much more efficient. Oh, yeah, reducing damage and stuff. But, I mean, just, yeah, I mean, Iron Hands is an easy pick, but anything good in the Marines now, you're going to be able to hang on stuff like this. And so I thought it was kind of worth examining while we had a minute. I mean, I guess you could even make the argument for, obviously, like Imperial Fists and whatnot, too, the extra damage. Obviously, the home for anything big like that at this point is just going to be Iron Hands. And I'm not trying to be really negative about it because, you know, I, I picked up the army again, too. So, but I mean, it just... <laughs> well, you, you have been a player of Iron Hands for some time. Not that I'm, not that I'm saying we have to qualify your interest. I'm just saying that. Yeah, right. <laughs> but it's without being overly fluffy about it, I think that, the, you know, I think the play experience against one of those is a little bit better than, say, like someone trying to just run multiple Leviathans and just, you know, leaf blower you off the off the table. I think that although it's very powerful, it is a point sink and you have, you know, like you said, there are all the challenges associated with it where, you know, I see the line of sight issues for it, even though it's tall and has height. I think that there's there's a lot that you can do to get away from it. Yeah, yeah maybe so. Uh, I yeah, you know, especially line of sight uh, be, with lanes of fire. You know, I think that's that's the key. That's what you want to create on any table is a, is kind of lanes of fire, irregular lanes of fire. Let people uh, use their guile in the movement phase to to work things out. You know, I was I was talking with some folks over the course of the week about how uh, like mid range stuff. I, I have an uh, kind of an inclination to want to charge things and get close closer to the enemy. Mm. And so if what I've got was yeah. So if I've got something in my list that has kind of one of those mid range, like the twenty four inch ranges or whatever, I'm like more likely to screw it up. Uh by screw it up means I'll be in a place where I get I, I get tagged to where I have to miss a round of shooting or open myself up to a charge where I where I, I could have played just a little bit more defensively or whatever. So, you know, I, I like to say I play aggressively and I like to move my models around and I like to play in every phase. But what that really translates is like code for me saying sometimes I screw up because I've got a I've got a model that has like mid range, mid movement. It, it, it doesn't feel it, it. It's not uh, a polar extreme. So I'm having to make more decisions during the course of the game. Well, I think that the game is... You, there is no such thing as an army that exists between 12 and 24 inches, right? Like, there's there's a turn where you can say that, but there's no armies that dwell there consistently. I think that if your game plan is to try to sit sit at a perfect, you know, 12 to 24 inches and just shoot repeatedly, you you're just pl- you should just plan on being an assault. It's like know? plan on playing Necrons. Right, exactly. It's, it's, it's much harder than it sounds like. It's, it's almost impossible to do. There's several armies that I think GW has tried to do in the past. I think originally... They tried to do that with Tau, but they gave them the ability to jump back to try to stay in that 12 bubble. So without that sort of, without anything like that or or it, weird abilities to consolidate out of phase or something, I think that that's a it's a fool's errand to try to say that that's the design of your army is just to dwell there. I agree with what you're saying. If, if you can stay in that 36 to, you know, we'll say 24 to 36 range, you're, you're much more healthier. Plus, if you have the ability to, or, or to convert and then just dive in to the assault, you're obviously in a much better place because you can compete in more more phases, I guess. Well, it's, it's got me thinking, what what can do that? Like, what, what do you take uh, if you're going and want to try to win a bunch of games that limit your decision points? And that's what got me thinking like the leviathan is one of the, it's it's obviously very brutal as we've been talking about especially with the, with the storm, storm cannon arrays like 20 shots you know and you can beef up the overwatch you, you can heal the thing i mean again it's it's got it's got everything um you know does that outweigh it, it do, it's not an incredibly long range thing the iron hands help that though uh, with the ability to move and not take the the, the penalty for firing heavy weapons while you're in devastator doctrine so theoretically theirs are 30 inches right because they move yeah. the movement so yeah i get you yeah so yeah, you know, I'm thinking, am I going to get myself in trouble with that? With that, maybe, maybe not. Uh, maybe I should just focus on taking the Mortis Contemptor, like we talked about last week. The whole as can see. Yeah. I've, I've seen more and more chatter around the internet. <laughs> People are hot on that. Yeah, I mean it's it's a uh, 168 points or whatever, so it gives you uh, a few more points to to sprinkle around to some some different things, and you know that's going to lead us to our next or one of our next topics anyway. I want to talk about the you know the, the space ring troop choices. I know we've talked a little bit about that stuff in the past, uh, but we we didn't. I don't think we spent enough time talking about things like the infiltrators and the incursor squad. Before before we do that though, let's let's talk one more point on dreadnoughts because this is something I struggle with constantly. I think that the the auto cannons on the Leviathan are a clear level above all the other weapons, so I would never take a power claw over one of those. They're just so clearly more powerful. But but on like regular dreadnoughts between going mortis and I just I I find everyone like there's a whole lot of talk out there about everyone wanting to run everything as mortis, whether it's you know venerables, regular, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. I have a hard time in my mind where it's an Iron Hands army per se. 
and you've got the bonus of moving six inches, well, if you're going to move six inches, I'm not moving sideways or backwards. I'm probably moving forwards, which means I'm I'm not dwelling in my 12 to 24 inch bubble that I, I say I'm going to. Is it? Is there no play? What What is the place of a dreadnought close combat weapon in your mind? Like when do you when do you take that other couple of shots out and say, okay, there's going to be a time when this guy's in. I don't want him just being wrapped. I want him to be able to win some combats oh, or, or just do some damage on a charge. Yeah, it's slightly more complicated than that. I think. I think that the reason that people are so inclined to take two of something is that it's uh, twice as likely to get some result that you want from it. So that's why the, okay. the mortis stuff, it, because it's just easy. Um, it's easy to kind of, you're not deluding yourself because you don't have points devoted to different functions. You're baking that into your first turn. Yeah, or what you're baking whatever I think you, you expect out of that thing uh, mm-hmm. into it. it. You're doubling down on whatever you expect it to do. So uh, if it's got two close combat, which, by the way, ironclad dreadnoughts with two close combat weapons or even the, uh, you know, the contemptor with two Claws. Can can regular Marines take the temp, uh, Contemptor with two power fists? Uh, I'd have to double check the book. I don't know if they can take it with two power fists. I know they have, you know, obviously access to the. To I, I don't think that's a good option. I was going to. I'm just curious if they could do it. But I think that the Ironclads, if you make them a character, uh, you then you might even get in close combat. So then you take them with the Warlord trait or run them as a counter. Yeah, or just I mean, a counter assault, you know, or, or is that. Counter assault I don't, I just, is not bad. I mean, I don't. They can't be a ton of points. Yeah, no. I guess what I'm saying is, is like it just seems like every time I play the game, and, you know, whether it's you know competitive or not, if it has contemptor in the name, it ends up in close combat at some point. <laughs> you know, and I just I don't like the feeling of you know, okay, well I'm gonna have to kick my way out of this because it just never happens, right? So I don't know. I just how do you end up in combat with two with four yeah, last cannons strapped to your arms? Well, because you know I'm only I'm. Probably not bubble wrapping my stuff efficiently, right? <laughs> well, it, it gets harder to do it with Marines because you got less bodies. Well, and when exactly. you think about it, you know, Leviathan, for example, is close to 500 points. I mean, it's it's a big chunk of your army. And if you've got more than one, like people are talking about taking, that's like half your army in two models. Unless you're, you're taking allies, which you don't want to because you want to be able to benefit from the specific chapter tactics. And the doctrines, you know, you're you're not going to have a whole lot of screening power or bodies that can, you know, take the kind of firepower that people bring to clear out screens. That's one of the reasons why my Leviathan, I always brought a close combat weapon because inevitably I would find it would get it would get stuck in. I think you will get stuck in more often with the storm cannon arrays because of the inherent kind of shorter wow. range. You know, people can can get up on you and movements real fast in the game. Uh, the the relic Leviathan is three hundred and three points. Holy uh, kidded! He, uh, that's with the two storm cannon arrays and two heavy flamers. Okay, okay. I'm probably thinking of with a dreadnought drop pod too. Then. At least the old points cost. That sounds, I remember it was, sounds quite, about, it was quite a bit. Yeah, yeah. That, that sounds like about what that, that would cost. I think that was somewhere around the 160, 180 range for the Dreadnought Drop Pod. I, off the top of my head, not looking at it right now. Yeah, and that since I believe that has gone down. But you know, I think it's, for now, I think that it's really, really aggressively, really aggressively priced. And I wouldn't be surprised if maybe we see some changes to the Viathans going forward. If the Forge World tanks for custodies or any kind of barometer for that sort of thing, see, I, I imagine that's going to happen. May, maybe so. I just don't think, I mean, just because something's I good. One chap- I don't think one chapter supplement's enough to make them kick it over. If yeah. anything, they would do something with the chapter supplement rather than, because there's a whole lot of people who own Leviathans in other colors, you know what I'm saying? That Storm Cannon Array, though, is brutal. It's been brutal for a long time. It's, it's a good gun. It's uh, absolutely a good gun. Heavy 10, strength 7, flat 2 damage, neck 2 AP. Flat 2. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, it. And it's good in 30k as well for people who like to dual build like I do. I know. Sadly, I only own one, and it is painted blue. <laughs> I'm about not, to have a black one you can borrow. Uh, yeah. There's there's a lot of blue iron hands, you know, successor chapters that are coming soon. I, I wouldn't worry too yeah, much. Ultra, ultra hands, God, <laughs> that make me sick. I mean, well, you know, we we have talked a lot about the iron hands because I think they're 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 kind of like the, the elephant in the room. I think for some of this stuff. Yeah, I mean the iron fathers. Whatever we talked, about, I don't want to beat it to death, uh, but he will beat you to death. That's what. 
<laughs> we, we we just literally closed the show out last week talking about a mediocre list that like trounced fools. <laughs> so, <laughs> we gotta. Uh, uh, but but see that the horse that list or whatever has got me thinking about all these other things. Like what about predators with heavy bolters and an auto cannon? What about the uh, uh, the Sicarian with the pre- the um, the head, the rotor the Punisher cannon on top of it? That's the one I've secretly been looking at. So like 180 points, two heavy bolters. It's like basically 28 heavy bolter shots, all said and done for 180 points. Pretty mobile, dwelling in the Devastator Doctrine, plus yeah. being hard kill. Yeah. And, you know, and this, you know, we kind of fell by the wayside, but talking about the Invictor. You know, I haven't seen one of these in action yet in the wild, uh, but man, I'm, this thing's brutal. It's going to be, it's a, it's, a, it's a new age for Space Marines. I mean, I think they finally figured out a way to to make the power armor and the, the stuff exist beyond just the three plus save. Um, or may, maybe. So that's why I want to talk about the uh, the troop choices and stuff in this episode again, because it's kind of the fun, it's, you, you need now, there's that mindset of, you know, do you have more toys? Do you have more boys or whatever? But, you know, we play a game where you need to be able to score objectives and, and then endure. And even if things don't go your way in turn one, uh, you've got to find a, find a way to, to be there for the bottom of the round and, and still do some damage back. Right. And, you know, how to do that, I think, is either finding the right way to bunker down into into uh, terrain or the right number of troops or right number of mix to where you cause some target confusion for your opponent. Yeah, and I, I think that one of the things that works the best for, you know, the kind of the integration of Space Marines as, you know, the, the legend and the myth and what what's on the tabletop is they still will die like Marines Heroically, for the most part. Taking lots of Lozinos with them. Exactly. I mean, they they aren't this indomitable rock that can just deal with every little bit of damage, except in very specialized, you know, maybe three different specialized builds. The majority of the Space Marine units, they hit harder, but they still die like Marines. So I, I like the fact that you, you come in and you're going to have brutal first, second, third turns, but you're on the flip side. If you can't deal that damage in the first, second, or third turn, then your staying power is going to suffer quite a bit. And that's where I feel like the, the tricks that come with some of these units, the, the troops choices, the new troops cho- choices, like incursors and the, the different infiltrating units that have some more versatile abilities, things that can get, that can deny deployment or do some area control or can work around deployment zones. I think those are going to be the things that make Space Marines really stand out more than just some of the more obvious, super powerful things that everyone's talking about right now. Yeah, good, good point. I mean, there's just so so many stratagems that that you can use to make a unit a little bit of a Swiss Army knife, uh, and it's not difficult to get them. You know, especially when you're talking about two battalions. So how do you get those two battalions? I mean, it's real easy to say just throw scouts in there. I th- I think there's a case for 25 snipers. Sniper scouts? Yeah, sniper scouts. Just regular old scouts. Is he in? When when I think snipers nowadays for, for space marines, I think eliminators, and I think you know bring bring some scouts for sure. But when I think of eliminators, it's like okay, well this is actually now feasible for me to possibly bring a brigade detachment because very low point investment for some very high quality shooting in the heavy support slot. I, I think it, a f- a five man unit of scouts with sniper rifles is what sixty points. Yeah, with no camo cloaks, it's about sixty points. So for six units, six units, you're looking at three hundred and sixty points for thirty sniper rifles. Well, and those benefiting from the Devastator Doctrine as well, and the fact that you can set them up pretty much to have complete coverage on the board. You know, that uh, aside from just ignoring line of sight, if you can see them, they are, you know, all characters are under threat. Yeah. Well, and vice versa. Like, your own characters are protected if you can't see them, right? Like, you just run all the character keyword abuse. Yeah, I mean, I think there's, I believe there to be, uh, I'm sorry, a sniper rifle is two points apiece. So let me, let me, let me redo that math just for one So that'd second. be 65. Per Would you say sixty or sixty-five? Uh, sixty-five if it's two points per sniper rifle. Anyway. Yeah. So yeah. So sixty sixty-five times six. You're saying twenty-five, not thirty. You wouldn't just do two battalions. Three hundred and ninety. Yeah. So I said thirty. Yeah. That's that's two battalions. That's six squads. Yeah. I guess. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's kind of you know. I guess it's that's one way to do it. Let's just say that's one way to do it. It's Art. the most efficient way to fill out your troop slot. I don't. I'm not going to sit here and say it's the the best way. Well, let's see what. Let's take a break. Then we'll come back and talk about incursions. Okay. Let's do it. See you on a second. 
FTN is brought to you by Discount Games Inc. Please visit them at www.discountgamesinc.com. And don't forget to ask Jay about ways to save even more on your hobby projects. Hey everybody, we are back. Still got Chris and Josh here. Hello. Ready for the incursion. All right, so talking about scouts, I'm not convinced they're the most efficient uh, use of your points. I just think they're the most efficient way to fill out a battalion. And, and the things I, I'm not a fan of, although sniper rifles are great for hitting enemy characters, etc., etc., I don't feel there's any stratagems that can you can abuse with them. They don't have a whole lot of close combat ability, and if you're actually using them forward to zone out your opponent, you can count on them being a platform to be sh slingshot off of if you're not really careful with how people consolidate or um, or do their heroic interventions and whatnot. You, you could you could find yourself like basically getting one round of shooting out of them, and, and they're they're done. Yeah, you, you basically put them out there in harm's way. Somebody takes advantage of that. You need to. Some of these units or some of these armies, you know, like gene stealers or, yeah, I mean, you don't see this as much anymore. You know, Alpha Legion or whatever. You you have to kind of counter deploy them, and so you you don't have the. You're leaving yourself even more vulnerable if you don't uh, slow them down in some way. That means you're not necessarily getting the most effectiveness out of all your sniper rifles. I'm saying with 30, you might have enough to forward deploy and block them off and keep about 15, 20 of them in the back. But well, you know, I see your point though. The fact. They have one wound, no appreciable way to really buff up their uh, their combat effectiveness, their speed bump uh, durability. You know, I, I get it. I get what you're saying. I mean, they die to death spinners. El Eldar Strength 3 has a good chance of killing them. You know, I mean, there's just not a whole lot of... Their saves just not... Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, especially... Well, most Eldar. of the use I get out of them is, is just as forward screening units and a mild combat threat to things like... Hormigants, termigants, things with low armor saves. They can put out some damage against orc boys. I, I think that, you know, uh, scouts, like everything else, got a bunch of buffs with the Space Marine updates. Uh, I feel like sniper scouts are going to be a lot more usable when you have, like, the Devastator Doctrine that you can rely on, where you know that their shots are doing a little bit more damage. At the same time, I, I really feel like Eliminators are better at picking out those characters because a smart opponent is going to hide the, the characters from your LOS restricted scouts. And they're not doing a whole lot if they get into combat, if they if they have sniper rifles. It almost kind of feels like throwing those extra points away. I think when you invest in them, you are kind of shortchanged. So if you're, you're buying the camo cloaks, you're buying the rifle, you know, then you, I think you need to really question what you're going to be doing them practically in the game if you start doing that. Yeah, you're going to have to really con you know, take into consideration the things that are going to pick them up off the table. And I feel like they... More often than not, even with camel cloaks and with the number of things that can ignore cover or the things that can just threaten them in melee, you know, those extra points you're investing into them, I think some of the new Primaris options are a little bit better, a little bit more versatile. Uh, is there, I, I know we, I mentioned we're going to talk about the incursors, but is there something that, that's jumping out at you, you know, more exciting than those guys? Well, you know, more, more exciting than the incursors? I'm not sure that I could say that. I mean, I, the, the thing that I like about the incursors is how they can threaten things in many ways. And Space Marine Incursors, particularly, you know, Codex Space Marine Incursors can benefit from a lot of some of the good stratagems that are out there. You know, there's a, a funny equation going out, you know, a few weeks ago about how a squad of 10 can get a ridiculous, you know, exploding sixes, extra attacks that can almost kill a nine in one round of combat, la -de da 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 Yes, that's an edge case. Uh, I, I like the deployment denial that comes from the infiltrator squads. I find that as someone who really builds solid screens, having that extra way to, to push out threats like Gene Steeler Calder or, or whoever, things that want to get in close that can't always You're get in as close the as they want. You're referring to the Omni-Scrambler from the Infiltrator Squad. Yes, that's yes from the Infiltrator Squad. I really like them. Uh, I like the uh, the incursors for some of the for the ability to shoot things and, and eliminate some of the benefits for cover or, or eliminate some of the things that would prevent your shooting from impacting as much. The role of sniper scouts I feel has been perfectly eclipsed by the eliminators. You know, you got three models. Yeah, it's not as many shots, but it's a more powerful shot. You have a more you're more likely to hit. You're more likely to wound. You know, higher strength, higher AP. Uh, the no line of sight rounds have a plus two to hit, so you're hitting on twos the majority of the time. Um, those aren't a troop's choice per se, but I feel like the things that you're wanting to use your scouts for 
things like the in- infiltrators and the incursors do the job with a better armor save, more wounds, and a pretty reasonable points cost. What is the points? What's the base points cost on uh, an incursor? An incursor is nineteen points base, and the infiltrator is what? Like- the infiltrator is twenty-two points base. Oh wow, that's, that's, that's a big difference when you start talking about the tens and twenties of models. It is. When you think about it, though, a scout model is eleven points, but that has only one wound and a four plus save, right? An infiltrator. 22 points, is a 3-up save, 2 wounds, and it has all of the extra abilities that that unit has, the 12-inch deployment denial, etc., etc. And they have... It should never be in hand-to-hand if it's played correctly. Yeah, the infiltrators I don't think should should ever be in hand-to-hand. I think hand-to-hand scouts are still, I mean, bang for your buck, as about, about as good as you're going to get if you're trying to fill out some cheap troops, uh, troop slots. The incursors, you actually don't care too much if they're in hand-to-hand because they have those paired combat blades. That's true. I mean, you mentioned the uh, the infiltrators never getting in hand-to-hand. I mean, the, you can put them up forward to d- deny. I mean, that gives you to extend your deny range for deployment. And You can't. Th- I you mean, can't. there are plenty of things that can cross that, that gap. But I think that they go up, do some area denial, do a mag rip, fall back <laughs> with their ca- carbines or whatever. Um, fall back into your own lines or whatever. You maybe lure someone in, and you've got a character do their, you know, character shenanigans, and they they uh, consolidate their heroically intervene, and then they can, you know, if you doing your math right, then you throw them into a combat. You know you're gonna win. You don't throw them out there as a speed bump. If you're gonna speed bump, just use any scout, not yeah. sniper scout. Use scout with shotguns or something. Yeah. So you're at least getting some Overwatch out of it, you know. Yeah, and you're talking about the the infiltrators again. They two two base attacks. That can't um, kind of. I think this we haven't focused on that enough. Is that the primary stuff? It does have two base attacks, and then when you put in the um, the shock assault or whatever, that's an extra. That's an extra attack. I mean, that's yeah. So I mean, really scouts at- get that too. So I mean, they get the they're up to two attacks, but three attacks. You know, and you were talking, uh, Chris, about the uh, the incursions with the with the paired combat blades. You know, I mean, that's one additional. That's additional hits coming out of sixes, and so you got more opportunities to roll sixes, especially on the uh, the first round of combat. So let me ask a question then. We, what we're talking about troops and if we're, we're we, we exist i guess and we always talk about you know the meta or whatnot are we saying that in the, in the current meta we know we know knights is the list we know the chaos shooting list is uh well, should I shooting list the uh, uh, lord discordance um that's that's still a list uh we know g sealer cults is a list um and you know things things to do with those lists do rather than just say those lists right what particularly suits scouts or the other guys, you know, to make them a better choice against those lists? Like, what what are they doing that's better, you know, contextually? Or is this strictly a marine on marine argument? No, no, I think that you know we we start talking about like is thirty scouts with sniper rifles any good? And I think against things like Gene Steeler cults, it's not as good as it maybe sounds on paper. You think the Gene Steeler cults have tons of uh, characters, and they do. But those characters can also dump off wounds. The Imperial Guard are actually still, I think, a kind of a, uh, you know a threat and yes. or Asriel Terum, and their company commanders are are often out of line of sight. You can tuck them into to all any kind of nook and cranny mm. and still issue those orders out. So you know, I, I think that the idea of mass mass sniper fire is more like an on paper thing, and then won't translate in every game that you play, and so you won't get that you won't get the predict- Predictable number of wins on the back of that 370, 60 something point investment that we had. You might get more predictable wins out of the investment in some of these other troop choices. And I, and I think that was maybe where you were going. Yeah. That's probably a more eloquent way of going where I was going. And I, I think the mission plays into this quite a bit too. If you're thinking from an ITC mission perspective, if you're planning on sniping out a bunch of characters, that means you're going for something like Headhunter. If you're in a different kind of format, where you're not looking to kill something every turn and you don't have a real incentive to hunt after characters because we still have a very high character count meta. I I can't think of any faction really that that doesn't bring at least four characters to a battle. You know, <laughs> you're you're building your army so that you can deal with those things in an ITC environment. Not every mission is going to be like that. Not every event you go to is going to use those missions. So maybe those extra points you're spending on killing the characters, yeah, it'll have an in an in game benefit of getting rid of some of those buffs or whatever that are being thrown out, but it's not necessarily going to score you more points either. 
I think the buffs are huge though. So, but the other things can kill the buffs. So, you know, there's that, there's that stratagem that allows the intercessors, uh, to be snipers, essentially. So there's ways to kind of maybe go about it, uh, that you don't need to necessarily invest in what might be a weaker body, you know, uh, just a, just if we're talking just wound for wound, you're getting more out of those wounds if it's something like an incursor. And that, that's what's drawn me to them, essentially. I mean, I know, I know they've been doing pretty well out there, but they've got that kind of a uh, close combat prayer. They've got a chance in close combat to do things. Mm-hmm. They've got some screening ability, you know, and they've got the bolter carbines. So, you know, when resolving an attack made with this weapon, the target does not receive the benefit of cover to its saving throw. So that's not necessarily spectacular, but at the same time, if you're firing them at units that are in cover, sometimes the string four, no AP just doesn't get it done, especially if they they're they're rocking a two up or a four up save. Yeah. This is gonna knock that down at least one sixteen something percent. I am still very much a fan, and this is probably off conversation, so we take it offline later if you want. I, I, I'm actually, the more I read the book and the more I study what I want to do on the table and the things I want to abuse, I'm more and more of a fan of going back to tactical Marines, regular old Marines. I, I really like, in in my particular army, once again, Iron Hands, right? So everyone grown. Um, I think the more opportunities you get to abuse the uh, the the six up and vulnerable, the better. You know what I'm saying? Now, granted, you could say the same thing you get from the scouts, which is huge. That's an inbuilt buff. But the fact that I can take that and I can do it on the other side of the table and have a chance, you know, if I want to, and I can get access to. You know, five guys and a plasma gun or five guys and, you know, whatever I want, basically. I, I, I kind of cherish that flexibility. Probably probably harkens back to my earlier conversation of, like, I don't like being caught in a, you know, situation where my dreadnoughts doesn't have a close combat weapon. I don't like getting caught in a situation where my troops can't <laughs> dig them dig themselves out. So I'm I'm probably the not the right person for this discussion. But everything I'm pointing out, I'm, I'm really a fan of being able to take, you know... I, the the Razorback, I like I like taking the dedicated transports for them. I like they just they just do work for me. No, I mean that's that's not terrible, especially in, in your in your list composition and and some inherent extra durability on on the vehicles. Instead of the uh, Omni Scope or the what is it the what was the name of it? the Omni Scrambler, uh, the Incursor Squad gets the multi spectrum array. So when resolving an attack made by with a ranged weapon by a model in this unit, ignore hit roll modifiers and ballistic skill modifiers. So they're, they can, their, their bolters are still being able to shoot at flyers or, or they're being able to shoot at things 24 inches away and not stacking up those neg one, neg twos. Yeah, very efficient. And let's not heads. forget, let's not forget they automatically ignore cover bonuses as well. Yeah. So yeah, it all, it's all, it's all there. All right. When I say all there, I mean, they've got, they've got a package of being able to deal with, uh, what I would consider like the counter to these guys. So some, the, the opponents counter deploy guys or forward deploy guys probably have some of these things that these this units can uh, can nullify. I think everything we've talked about, obviously, not to has, has a place, right? And so we're we're saying which is the most efficient in a vacuum scout snipers or these guys. They're Phobos too. Phobos has its own set of keywords and things that work on it. Right. Yeah, benefits from the Phobos librarian psychic powers. Yeah. Uh, you, do you, do you take do you, let me ask you this separately about your scouts? Do you go all sniper rifles, or do you throw the heavy bolter in there with them? Uh, when I when I take scouts. I typically just take the bolters or close combat weapon guys. I don't okay. even take snipers typically. Uh, oh, okay. I, well, I say that I do have 20 bolter scouts, but I haven't put them all in an army list at any given time. I'm sorry, uh, okay. 20 sniper scouts. And in, in no scenarios do you ever take the heavy bolter, right? Uh, never taken the heavy bolter. Not even in the pocket instance like, where you wanted to burn the stratagem to do the mortal wounds or whatever? Uh, no. Like the hellfire shots? No. I don't think I've taken a heavy bolter on those guys since like third edition. Okay. But see, I'm also, I like to play <laughs> with the minimum, like the minimum investment to do what I think the, the role of the unit is. And so if I, if I think I, I never buy camo cloaks either. Oh, spicy. Yeah. So when, when I, when I do take the sniper scouts, they got the cool cloak on and stuff, but I don't buy camo cloaks. Like the model has the cloak on it, but I don't, I don't. You, you, you are extra saying these guys get their two rounds of shots. Hopefully they do what I need them to do. And then they're gone. Yeah. I gotcha. That's it. If anybody wants to fo- spend time on dealing with them, then they're, they're not dealing with something else and maybe they get some uh, some character kills in or you know whatever they were used to do before yeah I mean so as I, I try to be as lean as possible on investment on utility units because I think yeah. you get too too kind of stuck in on buying the the plus pluses right. uh, and then it kind of dilutes what you could be doing I mean honestly I 
a lot of lists that I see, you could scrape out what I what I consider some of the superfluous stuff and get like a whole nother unit in the army. Right. And that unit might be a dreadnought, a land speeder, or a unit of scouts, you know, a re- unit of rangers in Eldar, or or maybe a, an upgrade that matters, like a you know a tempest launcher back in the day or whatever. Something good, right? Yeah. So, but but so if you get too kind of caught on making those clicks and whatever you know army builder you use, or attracted to how you just built that model, oh, this model's gonna be great. I'm gonna attach all these things to it, and now I'm committed to taking those points wise. I I always like throwing the, the pocket heavy bolter in there because it was one more sort of sneaky heavy bolter I could get some mortal wounds out of if I ever needed to previously. Or, and in the past, you was know, you points? used to be able to take... I, that doesn't bother Maybe me, I guess. 16 now. I don't know, it's like, well, it was 10 points back when I was taking it. Again, that was It was, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I, I hear your argument, and, you know, that is almost an entire another Marine, right? Yeah. So. I mean, uh, I'm not, I mean, again, I'm not trying to beat you up. I'm just giving you my philosophy on how I go about building the list. Right. And then no, the points, just, I mean, they'll just, work I their just, way back in. Just, that's, that's my hard part with Marines right now. That's probably why I'm a fan of attack Marines, because it makes me feel like I'm probably getting the most bang for my buck. I don't, Marines have always felt to me with, maybe this is just scar tissue from playing them for so long over periods of years, is that, you know, they, for a long time, as discussed, they, they were just the three up save, right? That's kind of all they really had going. They didn't have a ton of horsepower. So I always look to, try to squeak a little bit more oomph out of a unit if I could. And I'm not talking about giving upgrading everything to, you know, the nth degree, you know, and all kinds of superfluous junk on there. But if I knew, like I was talking about, like, okay, if these guys are going to have sniper rifles, I might as well throw the heavy bolter in there too, because at least I can get the mortal wounds out of it yeah. when I'm taking shots at X, Y, and Z, right? So I'm always looking for a, a cheaper investment to get a little something else out of it rather than just like another bolter shot or a yeah. guy who's just going to get, you know, stomped. They also have similar range bands. So that's another reason why in, in the past I would not have taken like those kind of weird weapon options is because I couldn't bring the full squad to bear for any now, now with like being able to choose where you fire at it's a little less you know necessary but that's that's one of the reasons I wouldn't have done in the past right right is if you know like when you see you saw people show up with like the right out of the box devastator squad and like one last cannon one heavy bolter one plasma <laughs> cannon one missile launcher yeah or whatever. That's that's the way I felt every time the, I would. It's I would the, oh, you're new to the game, Devastator Squad. <laughs> that's the way the box came. That was the box set back in the day. Uh, but now it's, le- it's less uh, a problem. But um, I do like having being able to bring the full squad at things. Again, that's that's less opportunity to screw up when I'm saying this whole this whole squad is firing at that over there. Not not that, not that you shouldn't you know mess with that. Like don't just go into autopilot. But I think once you become familiar with the unit, the math around what that what you can expect out of that unit, and that and that that helps with uh, firing priority and decisions in that phase, especially when you're on your third or fourth game of the day. One more question for you then, because I, I know you're trying to wor- run this scout discussion, but where do you think the place of the LAS cannon is in the Space Marine Army these days? I mean, obviously, four of them mounted to a contemporary dreadnought. <laughs> you think that's the go-to spot to get your LAS cannon, so... Huh? Uh, well, it doesn't necessarily... It doesn't have to be, but the LAS cannons... How many, how many points is the LAS cannon? It's a uh, lot. Like 25. Yeah, that's that's what I'm saying. They're expensive, and they're an expensive platform like to, to get them on, usually. Yeah, you got to find something you got to find something where you get like a discount on the last cannon. Yeah. And I don't know if I feel like I, I, I have found that in, in the Marine book. Like I, I'm finding myself wanting to take, call it three, right? I don't know if that's my, I'm, I'm always looking for a place to put three. That's my magic number. Four is obviously better on, on a contemptor. The, the Predator but, Annihilator is another good option. The Predator Annihilator is the body of it is you're pay, you're basically just paying for the weapons. Yeah, it's 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 like a free chassis for it. Almost. So you're looking at like a hundred and sixty eight ish, seventy ish points or whatever for something with four last cannon shots and a storm bolter. Okay, I don't mind that. No, the only the only the only I only have Dark Angels Predator Annihilators. So, but I, no, you're right. That's probably a, a wise decision. If that's a that's a good place for my. I, I, was it my first instinct to think of, of that as my go-to spot for, for last cannons? Because I tend to, to shy away from Devastators, because obviously that slot is very, you know... You can usually fit in a Devastator squad if you need to. I'm not saying that your heavy slot's so contested you can't squeeze them in, but I, I've been more and more drawn to just, like... there's I think there's a Horde Marine list out there that does everything you want it to do. I'm like, I, I'm just afraid to actually try to, like, do it. And, I, and what's holding me back is, is where do I put the heavy weapons? So And I was going to bring that back around by saying I think the tactical squads are still not a bad place for certain heavy weapons. 
uh, I guess especially on like with the Devastator Doctrine. Yeah, being able to move and fire them. Yeah, you know, in an Iron Hands or whatever. But yeah. or even Imperial Fist, right, with the extra damage and ignoring cover, like that's going to be a big deal. Yeah, yeah, it could be, could be. Uh, we well, know. Anyway, we some... long drawn out way of, of talking about like I'm, I'm, I'm having analysis paralysis on what to do with with heavy weapons in a Marine list. Well, I mean that that kind of ties into our troop discussion. We weren't necessarily talking about scouts, about like what what troops to take. Is like, is there even a place for the tactical Marines anymore? And I, I guess. What are they? They're 11, 12 points apiece? They're so cheap, man. Uh, that's They're... all. That's almost a discount on one last cannon, but I guess maybe... And so what do you get? You have 55. You're looking at, a, at, you know, conservatively 80, 90 points for one last cannon. I think you're better off going to that Predator and getting... Um, right. and, and then I, I just... I'm not going to... For the same reasons that we talked about uh, with the Scouts not having... Um, you know, they're, they're, they don't have a good um, supply chain for stratagems. <laughs> yeah. There's no way to beef to turn that up to, to 11. Yeah, but but this other stuff is going to. So I think that. I, yeah. But yeah, if you've got, um, let's let's say you're not going that counter deploy, or you have the counter deploy taken care of with these other Primaris options, and you need some stuff to hold down the backfield. Um, a, a Space Marine tactical guy holds it down better than a scout, I think. Yeah, but do you just leave him there with his bolter buddies, and they just yeah. stomp on, or do you have him taking chip damage off of stuff? I got you. No, it's it's. I mean, the, the chip damage is going to come from the uh, the bolter display. Ones. Yeah, I mean, because things are things are going to be coming close. Yeah, or you're going to have to you know trail them out. You have a unit kind of trailed out. Those 32 I, I, mil bases get you like five 32 mil bases. You can cover a lot uh, of ground on a table. Yeah, I guess I guess what I'm doing is I'm I'm looking at I'm, when I'm thinking about my list as well. I'm 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 thinking about the table and I'm thinking about okay, I'll be able to hide these guys for at least a turn. I'm getting them a tank. Tank's going to have the twin link assault cannons on it. It's going to have a storm bolter probably or maybe not. We'll see depending on five some leftover points. But just extra shots it's on the platforms points. I have. That's Storm Bolter is a bargain for what it does. Yes. It's ubiquitous, but it's yeah. Anyway, but I'm thinking to myself, okay, if I'm if I'm if I'm facing down two, three Leviathans or Contemptor, you know, Mortises and all this kind of stuff, he inherently by model count and by just point restrictions alone, he doesn't have a huge amount of 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 troops to go out and capture the board. So I can effectively just deny him a couple rounds of shooting unless I absolutely have to be standing on something, and then I'm making him shoot his expensive models at junk. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like that was, I mean, one of Chris's buddies. That was how he won, uh, or at least went undefeated at a, at a major event. Was basically just like being everywhere with trash units that that couldn't be dug out. He can't clear me off fast enough, right? And, I th- and that's where I'm going with tactical marines right now, rather than scouts or. And there's probably even an argument for scouts being able to do it in some instances better because of the cover and the cloak. But you say you don't buy the cloaks. I, I don't, you know. but I'm a miser when it comes to that kind of stuff. But but it, but in a in a I guess a, what we call like a point denial or an area denial kind of list where I'm saying okay, well I'm just going to make you come dig me out. So by the time your leviathans walk over and you get me in your sweet spot. Next thing you know, you've only got three turns of shooting me out, and oh, by the way, I've just driven into you, so you've got one round of really shooting on me, and then you're going to stomp me out with Leviathans. I, I think I can flood the board for three turns and just play, you know, hide hammer rather than try to, like, kill him off the table in that instance. In, in, I'm talking mirror match. Like, I don't know if that was I guess it. in a mirror, yeah, the Leviathan, not every Leviathan can be touched and then locked down for a turn. Right, and, and I don't think you're going to. I think that, like you're saying, with those three tanks, the repulsors, and however many other Leviathans around it, like, you're just going to have a hard time. I'm actually getting there and overwatching and just it's gonna be brutal but yes. i think that yeah it will yeah so until the eldar get released like i told them about last week and all <laughs> be fixed <laughs> everything will come back into balance is what you're saying everything yeah all the hate's gonna be oriented in the proper direction again yeah once 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 the banshees can just come out of anything and just lock you down with no overwatch it's gonna be all good <laughs> Strategy, uh, hope, something hope will happen I, no lie uh, you know, hand to heart, I've had a painted unit of Banshees for I don't know, 15, 16 years that have never seen the table in 40K. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Never. They've just never been good enough. Striking Scorpions were always a little bit better, or they just, or they didn't have a place at all. You yeah, know? That strength 3 is brutal. It's so bad. And so I, I'm hoping that they, they come out. I do want to talk you know, more, more of this. What are, I guess, let's, let's end this segment on what are people taking for their troop choices? And you know, are incursions the way to go? I think they're probably the way 
way to go. I think that it's probably going to be what I choose. Can't wait for those those models to come out. I guess they're the flip side of the infiltrator kits or what will be the infiltrators. Heck, they could be in there right now from, from the starter set. <laughs> but that's the that's the flip side of I think of that kit will or probably will be. We didn't even talk about the haywire mine, but they do have some extra utility that you have to pay points for. But let's let's just pause that. Hear what everyone else is doing out there. Uh, let's come back and I want to talk about kill team for just a few minutes. All right. FTN is also on Facebook. Please like us at www.facebook.com forward slash forge the narrative. We are back. So got the guys here. I played in a kill team tournament. It was organized for a buddy of mine's birthday. Uh, these are some uh, some old guys I've known forever. The guys I got into the hobby with, and uh, they have been on hiatus for a long time. Come back to play the skirmish games, kill team, war cry, and that kind of stuff. Oof. So I brought out the Eldar. They were using elites, uh, but no commanders. At least I don't think. Uh, by the time we started playing, I was I was deep into the uh, the beverages that I brought. <laughs> you highly competitive state of mind. <laughs> I did my best, man. Um, so I, I, the list that I took. I mean, we didn't take like the full roster or anything. I just put together 100 points worth of things. So I had Halle Banshee's Exarch, uh, a Wraith Guard with the D Cannon. So I was I was ready to rock. The Halle Banshees are actually pretty good in Kill Team. I I still like the striking scorpions a little bit better. See, that's the thing. They're just always 100% overshadowed by the striking scorpions yes. for what needs to get done in a game. Not, I mean, it's, I know they have different functions and everything, but like for what needs to happen in a game of like dice, the striking scorpions <laughs> seem to always get the edge. Yeah, they have the tools. Yeah, uh, and in this case, you know, they got the same thing they have in 40k. You know, mortal wound on a six beginning of the fight phase. Uh, the the way it works in uh, kill team is that uh, your charge is part of the movement phase and. And I was playing his orcs, and this dude had, I mean, he, he must have had 100 orcs. I felt like I was playing against a, a full like on one. game, yeah. Because, uh, I mean, he was, but it was, I mean, he's, he's obviously, but he had a lot of uh, Gretchen and orcs and, and some of the bigger. The range of 20 models, and you're probably 10, 12. Yeah, I, I mean, I might have had seven or eight. <laughs> I think we just had this discussion about my marine list versus the Leviathans, but okay. Yeah, that was I, I it. You. So my, and I felt like, I mean, the guy's, he's a good player, and I felt like I was in it, but my D cannon, I'm not, I just, my Wraith Guard just fired it in the dirt two rounds in a row. Take that, Gretchen. So, <laughs> yeah, and I, and then when I did hit, I didn't, I didn't take out his, um, uh, I forget what it was. Some some big mech. I think it was a bit like a big mech. Not, maybe not a big mech because that's an HQ, but um, uh, like a um, what's who has the snaz guns? Oh, uh, the the oh, yeah. hard not hard boys. Um, flash gets. Flash gets. Yeah, I think, yeah. I think he had several flash gets, and there was one that was just tearing me up, and uh, when I couldn't close him down. So eventually, we played. It was played a full game, but I eventually got got bottled up. But it was a it was a heck of a scrap. Uh, the heads. Uh, it was. It's one of those games. It's a you go I go game. Kill team. Uh, and mm-hmm. so you can kind of you kind of stay in the action longer. You're not waiting for them to just roll dice forever. You he gets to roll some dice, you get to roll some dice. Uh, so it it kept pretty. It was entertaining and exciting. If you guys have not gotten into kill team, and you're sitting around with some 40k models, the barrier to entry is basically none at that point. So check it out. I, it's it's one of the things that you can just do with with people. Uh, you know, you can get a full experience in 20 30 minutes. Yeah. Now I've been doing uh, Warcry on the other end of the spectrum. That's real popular out here. So. Is that just because Sigmar and like Lord of the Rings are more popular in general? Where, <laughs> where, I mean, where you are right now. I think there's a bit of it's the new thing. So it's just inherently kind of, you know, people with the oohs and ahs. Uh, I think people were uh, really turned on by the terrain for it. I think the terrain's oh, a little so bit good. more in- interesting than some of the stuff they released for the, uh, for the uh, when they did a kill team. Um but I'll be honest, I think the biggest thing is the fact that it has specific models for it. I think people were hyped just to see unique models, because that's one thing Kill Team really hasn't had, which is also the benefit to Kill Team, too, I would argue. You know, people out here were, like, all about the snake guys. Sorry if I'm, you know, offending diehard tryhards out there. I don't know all the cult names for the for the Warcry stuff. But, uh, <laughs> no, I think that was, that was the big lead into it. People really liked everyone had, like, their own little cult or uh, a, 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 one of the sub-factions, you know, that, like, People didn't want to buy the an entire dark elf army, right? But they really liked the Medusa looking chicks with the with the um with the uh, like the bows, the bows. And yeah, yeah, yeah. And you can run like just those, or you can run just brutes, right? And in the game, all the okay, so the Warcry specific boxes. The only knock, the only negative, which isn't really a huge negative in my mind, 
those are very well balanced against each other, right? But when you start playing like orc brutes or, you know, anything else that's not inherent to Warcry specifically, I feel like those are a little bit more powerful because people are able to select their models. You don't just have the one off that came in the box. So people are taking like two or three of a model that they, they need to be oh, good. So like able the to... thing that's like really good, you can just like give me four of those. Yeah, they don't necessarily are, they're not stuck to taking chaff or something. You know what I'm saying? It, it's it's not bad. It's just I think you get a better game if you say, hey, we're going to play Warcry specific or non-Warcry specific warbands when you show up to do things. I mean, it's, got all, a, all, it's got a specific look too. Like the Warcry stuff has, I mean, the, the things that's specific to Warcry have like this really cool aesthetic that we haven't seen necessarily uh, in other games. I mean, it, in, even in the Sigmar stuff, it's got like a, a like a, a slightly dialed up style of stylized to it. Yeah. Stylization, I think that's the word I was looking for. Yeah, so I think that's that's probably why it's it's doing pretty well. Of course, Aeronautica is another thing that's kind of a hit right now as well. We'll see how with it, you know if they they do another specialist slow release for that. I think that would hurt it. I think they need to you know once again they need to get more stuff out as fast as possible. But who, who knows? Cool looking planes, man. Get to say zoom zoom and and I'm I'm fighting it like you like know it's business. <laughs> Just picking them off every time I go in the store, and I just immediately put it down and walk away. You just need to come down to Atlanta. We'll jam some games. I, I, look, man, I, I I I committed to the group here. I was like, look, the first Xenos, the first non-orc army that comes out, I'll, I'm I'm in. <laughs> Careful, I, I'd pull the trigger. I don't care. I'll pull, I'll play whatever. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. I just the orcs didn't really turn me on. I really I, I don't mind the imperial stuff, but I feel like you know you're just just another imperial guy at that point. There's so much they could do. Yeah, I mean, I'm looking forward to seeing how it goes. The, and the models just look so good. And they seem to they so they seem to like be uh, they hold paint really well. They're really detailed. Yeah, and the decals are no joke either, man. Yeah, you get some really nice, cool, you know, Aquila wings on your Thunderbolts and stuff without a whole lot of effort. Heck yeah, American dream right there. Well, guys, that's what I want to talk about this week. Yeah, y'all cool. got anything you want to cover before we wrap this up? No, I think we wandered around the the topic enough. I didn't mean to pull us away from your direction, but uh, it was useful. I'd just like to end on a, a positive idea that we are now talking about Space Marine troop choices that aren't just two or three things. Yeah, I mean, it used to be, yeah, that's, that's a lot of variety there now. It's a good place to be. I'm going to say something that's going to have Paul Murphy shaking his head on the internet right now. I'm painting 20 Primaris Marines right now as my troop choices. So <laughs> he's like, I know it's like, wh- why? Is it Intercessors? But, just regular old? Uh, the, the 10 with the Stalker and then two, two squads of the five with the uh, the salt ones okay so they're i know it sounds corny but i like the idea of being able to walk up with the guys that do two damage a piece of course i'm building an army that's going to be directly defeated by butcher cannons with their two two wounds a piece or whatever it is yeah so that's the life we'll see yeah it is what it is but i like the way they look and i wanted to do a primaris army so whatever i won't go five and oh all right i'll well. be a, i'll be a three and two guy or something or a two and one on the day who knows chris josh thanks for joining me tonight we'll see y'all next week take care yeah cheers